When creating a pitch for a TV show, you start by writing what's called the log line. This is usually a one-line summation of the entire concept, like an ex-cop and an ex-con form a detective agency and fight crime. Or a cop and his computer-generated creation fight crime. Or an ex-cop uses a talking sports car to fight crime. Or how about this one? A man transforms into animals to fight crime. The early 80s was a golden moment in TV when the craziest high concept show pitches would result in actual programs presented to the viewing public, including, yes, the adventures of a man fighting crime by turning into different animals, Manimal. The concepts I've mentioned in the opening, and plenty others, were turned into TV shows by the legendary Glenn A. Larson, a man who truly rode the bipolar nature of television production, soaring highs and the deepest of lows. I guess you can gauge the value of his output according to critics when you consider that he produced over 800 episodes of television, but all that generated only three Emmy nominations with no wins. While creating such hit shows as Quincy Emmy, Magnum P.I., Knight Rider, and Battlestar Galactica, no, the other Battlestar Galactica. Oh God, anything but that! Yeah, that one. He also had short-lived flops like Trauma Center, Auto Man, Half Nelson, and The Highwayman on the balance sheet, as well as the show featured in this video, maybe the most notorious Glenn A. Larson production of all, Manimal. In 1982, NBC had great critical success with several of its shows, including medical drama St. Elsewhere, cop show Hill Street Blues, and a little struggling show about a Boston bar called Cheers. Enjoy himself in a bar? He's 11 months old. What kind of values can he learn here? Well, I thought the place had a lot to offer. Oh, please. He'll never learn to speak in this environment. Back in, everybody. No! <laughs> the problem was, these highbrow shows weren't pulling in very many viewers, and the Peacock was often placing third in the ratings. Meanwhile, over at CBS, they had the top-rated series on TV, Dallas. Larson had previously scored a ratings win by counter-programming against the primetime soap opera with the gimmick series Knight Rider, so NBC head Grant Tinker asked him to do it again, and Knight Rider, now established as a hit, was moved to Sunday nights, and Manimal was the horse NBC raced against Dallas on Friday nights for the 1983 TV season. A warning to the people of Dallas. Bobby, looks like we got Friday night wrapped up this year. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into television. Manimo is coming. Manimo is coming. Bobby, come on! Come on! Somebody help! Help! Manimo, Friday's this fall on NBC. Not your usual rubber ducky. Here's the show's dubious premise. Jonathan Chase is a wealthy playboy, as well as a professor at New York University teaching a course on how crime is a reflection of man's animalistic instincts. He also consults with police in the use of animals in police work, and he should know animals because he possesses the knowledge of the mystic talent of transmutation, a mastery of the secrets that divide man from animal, animal from man, manimal. <coughs> It is a talent passed down to him from his father, the result of research uncovered from Africa's darkest recesses to the rarefied peaks of Tibet. In other words, Chase has the astounding ability, if he concentrates and does some breathing exercises, to transform himself into any animal, although mostly just an eagle or a panther. In the pilot, NYPD cop Brooke McKenzie is on the trail of terrorists buying weapons and nerve gas. She witnesses a Black Panther at one crime scene and gets mixed up with Professor Chase. Leading the menagerie of actors in the show is the exceedingly white and very British Simon McCorkendale as Jonathan Chase, otherwise known as Manimal. <laughs> Genre film fans might recognize him as the pompous douche Philip Fitzroyce in a film released the same year as Manimal, Jaws 3D. <laughs> 
Brooke McKenzie is played by Melody Anderson, who had a lot of young boys locking the bathroom door or fumbling under the bedsheets when she played Dale Arden in the 1980 Flash Gordon movie. The role of Chase's old Vietnam War buddy Ty Earl is played by Glenn Turman in the pilot, who was subsequently replaced by Michael D. Roberts in the rest of the run. Apparently, Turman didn't want to sign the highly optimistic five-year contract for the series. Neither Turman nor Roberts seemed comfortable in the role of Ty, but Terman at least had some gravitas in his few scenes, whereas Roberts comes off more as just a goofy comic relief sidekick for Manimal. Ah! Rounding out the main cast is Rennie Santoni as the police chief. Peeps might know him best as Clint Eastwood's young partner, Inspector Chico Gonzalez in the first Dirty Harry movie, or maybe a sofa-soiling poppy on Seinfeld. In all, the acting from the cast isn't strong enough to sell Manimal's unbelievable high-concept premise with any kind of conviction. McCorkendale manages to make Chase seem both urbane and awkward at the same time. Anderson fails to create sparks as Mackenzie and Roberts, well... <sighs> probably the biggest star of Manimal, though, are the makeup effects done by Stan Winston, made to show Chase's transformation into what apparently were his two favorite animal forms, a Black Panther and a Hawk. Winston started out as a stand-up comic, then came to Hollywood as an actor, then apprenticed as a makeup artist at Disney before heading off on his own and starting Stan Winston's studio and becoming one of Hollywood's premier makeup and visual effects people, winning four Academy Awards. Unfortunately, it would seem that the Manimal production could only afford two sequences by Winston for the first handful of episodes, so the Hawk and Panther transformation scenes are used over and over and over again, and if Chase had to change into another animal in an episode, he'd do it off screen. Now, say you can get your head around the concept of a guy that thinks himself into becoming different animals. Every fantasy concept requires a certain amount of buy-in with suspension of disbelief, right? What I can't get past is that every episode looks as awkward as a running ostrich. Episodes often seem cobbled together and the editing is extremely rough. Shots will jump between night and day in a single scene. The whole thing comes off like an especially dubious Saturday Night Live skit, one that is going on for far too long. Another problem is that you can't make a show about a guy who can turn into animals and cheat the audience by having it happen off screen too often. You've hooked whatever audience you've attracted with your high concept logline, so by God, they're expecting to see the guy keep transforming into animals. They want Manimal. <laughs> if you have an episode about horse racing and JC is at the stables and needs to go undercover, don't cheat by having him step into a stall and change into a horse behind the closed door. And if you can't afford to show such a transformation, well, you know what the kitty said. Maybe trying to produce a show about a guy turning into animals in 1983 isn't the hottest idea. While it's fun to hound Manimal for its limited and oft-repeated visual effects sequences, you do have to admit that it had high ambitions and was unfortunately just plain ahead of its time when you see in hindsight how much better a transformation scene would be realized with the revolutionary CGI morphing technology used in George Lucas's fantasy film Willow just a handful of years later. I could continue to pick out more examples of the general shoddiness of Manimal's production values, which truly are surprising for a series that was pushed as a tentpole NBC show for 1983. I think the bigger problem lies with the mythology of Manimal, or lack of it. There being no kind of meaningful explanation for the origin of Chase's ability is a fatal flaw in the series. 
It's occasionally implied that the moon is somehow affecting Chase's transformations werewolf style. Typical for Manimal, this possibility is hinted at in a vague and inconsistent manner, not the kind of solid footing you need for a mythology that can be believed or even understood by the audience. And as usual with these kind of things, the speed at which Chase can transform varies. It can be a long visual effect showcase or just a few seconds off screen as per script demands. There's also a few blatantly cost-cutting bits where Chase only possesses the abilities of animals, like enhanced hearing, while not actually turning into them. It's also alluded to that he sometimes possesses the talent to control animals Aquaman style, although again, these extra skill sets are scattershot and pop up because... script. Out of all the logical issues with the manimal concept, the most glaring has to be the problem with what happens to Chase's clothes during his transformations. In the pilot, they actually include footage of our hero ripping out of his fancy duds when changing into a panther, but at the end of the sequences, when he turns back into a human, miraculously he is fully clothed again, even if he had been rendered unconscious during the action. And let's not forget that Jonathan Chase is a goddamn hypocrite. He often appears to lobby for the rights of animals and even for the freedom of a wild girl raised by wolves, but he keeps his own zoo of wild animals trapped in small glass enclosures in a swinging townhouse bachelor pad in New York City. When Manimal premiered in 1983, it wasn't just up against any old episode of Dallas, it was up against the season premiere of the seventh season when viewers finally learned who survived the big fire at South Fork Ranch and JC and the gang never recovered from the mauling they took in the ratings. Production on Manimal stopped after only four regular episodes were broadcast, after which it went on hiatus. It was during this time off the air that David Letterman, famous for biting the NBC hand that fed him on his talk show Late Night, dramatically trapped the possible fate of the show with a nearly nine-minute sketch. Okay, we got a good show for you folks here tonight. Uh, for all television-watching Americans, this, however, is a time of uncertainty, a time of hope, and a time of fear. Last Friday, the National Broadcasting Corporation aired what could be the final episode of the high-style fantasy adventure series, Manimal. Yes, the show about a man who fights crime by transforming himself into different animals has been temporarily removed from the NBC lineup and placed into that TV netherworld known as hiatus. <laughs> now its fate is in question, and join us, won't you, as we remember the past and look to the future of Manimal Show at the Crossroads. Onto this scene burst the special 90-minute premiere of Manimal, in which the timely arrival of Professor Jonathan Chase in the form of a panther foils a robbery attempt. This is obviously a tiger. We couldn't find a picture of a panther, but I'm sure he could have turned himself into a tiger. On October 14th, he becomes a hawk to break up a smuggling ring. Once again, we couldn't find a picture of a hawk. This is an owl. We may now never see Manimal become a collie, a gecko, or one of the more than 6,000 varieties of beetle. Now, we have some people in our studio audience who have agreed to share their feelings with us at this difficult time. How do you do, sir? Welcome to the program. What is your name, please? My name is Kyle Thompson. Uh, I wonder if you could describe the first Manimal show you ever saw. Well, it was uh, an ordinary Friday evening. I was in the living room and uh, flipping through the dials on the television set, and I came upon a scene of a man turning into a hawk. And uh, that was probably the one called Night of the Scorpion. Now, pretty impressive special effects, don't you think? <laughs> well, no, not really. He sort of just went behind the wall, and then the bird came out. Okay, well, thank you for sharing your memory. Uh, one other member of our studio audience who was kind enough to speak with us tonight. How do you do, ma'am? What was it uh, you liked about the Manimal program? What made it special for you? Well, I liked everything about it. I liked the costumes and the musical numbers and the guest stars like uh, Loretta Lynn and George Jones. And I like all the sisters, especially Barbara. And I like Louise and Earlene. Uh, excuse me, I, I think you're thinking of the Mandrell sisters. We're talking about the, the show Manimal. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. Uh, we have yet to get a definite answer on the fate of Manimal, but I, for one, can't let it go. There's still something we can do, of course. I mean, consult a psychic. Please welcome a man who has been on this show many times before, window washer, psychic, Morris Fonte. Morris! Uh, 
Uh, from what we understand, the show has been placed on a, uh, a hiatus, not actually been canceled, but we need to know, is there any chance that it will ever return? Sorry to say, I don't feel it will. Oh, really? No. That is gone and gone forever. Not, mm. not on another network, not in syndication, not in home cassettes? Nowhere. Nowhere. It's a ghost. It's, it's a history. Ghost. It's vapor. It's vapor. He went into the to the to the uh, to the west or somewhere, and, and that's where he'll stay. <laughs> so, in the words of Psychic Morris Fonte, Manimal has moved west. <laughs> um. <laughs> After its month hiatus, the remaining three shows of Manimal were aired, with the show moving from 8 p.m. Fridays to a new time slot, Saturdays at 8, to escape Dallas's wrath. It's still cratered, ranking 7th from the very bottom of the Nielsen ratings for October 21st, 1983, when NBC finally put it down. The network as a whole would make some dubious history for the 1983 TV season. Every one of the new shows launched that year ended up cancelled, and most didn't even make it through the season. Known infamously as NBC's no-hitter year, such a disastrous launch of new shows had never happened before on network TV, and not since. Manimal is a good representation of NBC's catastrophic 1983 lineup. It was the worst of high concept. It never took the wild idea at its center and made it take flight in other aspects of the character. It never built on that premise. Jonathan Chase is just a guy that can turn into animals, and it would have been so much more interesting if they had examined some of the more meaningful ramifications of that ability, other than things like his ass hurting a bit after getting whipped by a rider while posing as a horse. I guess I should probably end this video now because that's what I'm winding up doing with Manimal, beating a dead horse. I'm Bill, and thanks so much for watching what I've made here. If you got a kick out of it, please let me know by liking the video, following, subscribing and all that, and sending a comment my way letting me know your thoughts. Later! Meow.